here's something I think I forgot to mention about the train car that I'm going to be turning into a multimedia studio and retail space. I actually started out in a different car than the one that's currently being fixed up. There are several train cars, and the first one this was going to all be in was right before the caboose, which is being used by a company called Local Motion as an event space. The landlord who owns the train cars called one day and asked if we'd be willing to take the next car over because Local Motion wanted to expand in the one that we had. He said I didn't have to, but he would give us a great deal on rent if we did. And one of the reasons was because it would need a bit more work done and it still needed a bathroom, which he was going to build. His architect just hadn't got the people in there to do it yet. Well, I couldn't pass up the deal on rent considering this was all new. So I switched cars. I had a whole plan for where the bathroom would go, how the place was going to be separated into two different sections and how the multimedia podcast studio was going to be set up. Then we met the architect and he explained how the cars were going to be hooked up differently in the future and to sum up the whole conversation, my idea of how it would be laid out was now completely turned around. I got a little annoyed, but there wasn't really anything I could do to change it. But you know what helps relieve being annoyed like that? Ripping up old carpet. So after the architect and the landlord left, I started ripping up the 25 year old carpet and got it all too. Only thing was I wasn't quite sure what to do with all this carpet that now sat in a pile in the middle of the place. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. Up to this point, I've only talked to people that are in or around where I am here in Madison. But since last season of the show, I've started getting messages from people all over the place, which is pretty cool. So I decided I'd try something. I sent out an email to everyone on the American Bandito mailing list, just asking if anyone might want to talk on the show. Kind of like the thing I did when I first started the show in season one, when I created a Facebook ad asking artists if they wanted to come talk to me on the podcast. Two things happened. One, I didn't expect as many people to respond as they did, which kind of ended up making me feel bad because I was really only expecting a few people maybe to say that they would do it. So I actually had to break it to a lot of people that the remaining interviews had already been filled. And two, the first person to respond is the person I meet today. My name is Maddie Sheets, and I'm an artist. I draw and paint and play music and write songs. So Maddie and I set up a time, and I got a chance to talk to him more over Facebook Messenger. Where are you located right now? Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. I gotta tell you, Greensboro is pretty cool, but I... I'm surprised I still live in the South. Yeah? Well, I've lived here for over 20 years. So yeah. you're from there originally? No. Okay. I grew up in Connecticut and upstate New York. But why did you end up going to uh, North Carolina? My parents moved. Me and my brother moved with them because we were still young. But your parents no longer live there. I yeah, think. nobody lives here except me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you staying there just because opportunities, jobs? I mean, like, why, why did you stick around? Well, I left my parents' house. I was 19 and, you know, just went through a whole homeless phase and then a going to jail phase. And, you know, oh, really just having that kind of a rough few years. Literally, we're like homeless and ended up uh, going to jail. Yeah. I mean, that's not why I went to jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're in a home now. Yes. OK. So how did you progress from that that situation? I started hosting an open mic i know that sounds ridiculous but the open mics in town were really annoying or they 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 were blatant favoritism and you know like their buddies would play a whole bunch mm -hmm. me and my friend would go up there and play and we were punks you know whatever i i understand but so i was on a mission to do an open mic that was actually open to anybody Wow. And then I did, and I've done that for almost 17 years now. Really? Crazy. Made a lot of friends, and I just kept playing music and eventually getting gigs, writing songs. And so that's basically what I do. Wow. Like, that's what you do for a living? Yeah. So where do you do this at? I do have a residency at a little coffee shop in town, and I host a drink and draw at this place called the Artist Block. It's a really cool little place. That's mostly so I can sit and draw, <laughs> but I do end up playing music at it a lot. We have a drink and draw event here that I keep seeing somebody posts for. Is that like a thing? Because when I saw that you did one, 
I thought it was just something that a guy here locally was doing, but is it like some sort of national thing? I'm not sure exactly how to measure it, but I know it's not just, just a, it is a thing. It is a thing. Okay. So like, I didn't make it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to like, it's not something you have to sign up for. It's not like the Inktober thing, or is it like the Inktober thing where somebody goes, hey, I created this idea, pass it along? No, there has been some where they just, this hour, you have a prompt or you like you pull cards out of a hat like one time i did the one where you pull out of a hat and it got egg and bird and so i made like a it just was some eggs that looked like a bird you know (laughs) yeah what i do is i have stuff in my pocket for if anyone asks for anything Uh, i mean it's just like fuck that like i my whole drawing thing is i really just want to do whatever comes to me at the moment you know that's why i'm not like a successful artist or anything (laughs) (laughs) you are and this is uh, my point being uh, that they call musicians artists which is kind of confusing like when you search for like artist all of a sudden like tons of stuff like more so than not what will show up as musicians and they refer to them as artists. And that becomes confusing. Cause then what do you call people who draw you, drawers? Right. So that that's one of my biggest complaints is how that's kind of the meaning of that word has moved over a little bit. But, but in that case, you are an artist. I mean, you just said earlier that musically you are doing stuff. Now you started out saying when you did the open mics, you guys were punk. Now listening to the music that you've been making, that is not really what you do anymore. No, no, not much, not much punk. I guess we weren't really playing punk music either, but we were punks. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, like we were young and and stupid and probably having too many beers or something. You know right. what I mean? We were playing my friend's songs, and he had some really funny songs, and like that was part of the thing. Like I thought we had a good. I was blown away the fact that he wrote these songs Mm -hmm. and then I started writing songs and, and I'm still doing the same thing with the open mic now where it's, it is open. Like you can do anything like this dude reads from his book now. Like he's a writer yeah, and he's a real grouchy old dude. And he's like, he, he glares across the room at people who are talking while he's reading, you know, (laughs) (laughs) it is hilarious, but Hey, it's an open mic. You know, you can have your, four minutes or whatever it is. So Charles Bukowski shows up is what you're telling me. <laughs> it's kind of like that, except that would make me laugh if he was saying that kind of stuff. That would be lovely. Looking at Maddie's website and his social media accounts, it looked like a lot of the drawings and paintings are actually relatively recent as a thing that he's doing. What is your drawing background? What is your art background? I really didn't draw much until last year since I was a kid. My mom is an artist. She was an art teacher. So she would, you know, I would sit in on the lessons with the kids that were much older than me, just basic kind of art stuff. I never really liked to do what she wanted me to do either. (laughs) When When it comes to drawing, I don't know why I'm weird about that. I guess I'm weird like that about music too. But through the years, basically, I only drew flyers, you know what I mean? Or like graffiti kind of stuff. Then last year, I don't know, some happened. Well, first of all, I'm dealing with my new life. I have multiple sclerosis, and I found out uh, two and a half years ago. So, you know, life's different. Yeah. And, uh, but one thing that's really nice and calming and, you know, just something awesome to think about is drawing. Just like, I don't know, focusing on that. And this is my first time using color. I'm really loving it. Mm -hmm. I'm geeking out on all the, I'm I'm trying to get as many primary colors as I can. (laughs) Yeah. And it's it's lovely. And I like mixing gray. (laughs) (laughs) I really like doing that. (laughs) Okay. But no, I I love colors. I, I never... I hadn't even thought about the fact that there was warm and cool colors and like a warm blue, for example, like that made no sense to me. You know, I just think it's great. In looking at your stuff, I mean, it was, I I like the colors that you're doing and maybe it's just because it's, I mean, it's my preference. I like it that you're just not drawing with abandon, but not like going, they have to be perfect lines. Some sketches, some, uh, just mostly pen because I love pen and ink, like all different kinds. I'm 
I'm crazy about it, and I'm I'm so crazy about it that like I have to bring my pens with me when I go anywhere. I have this vest that has a bunch of pockets in it, and I bring it everywhere, so I'm always prepared. Oh, really? Yes, I get really anxious about stuff. So because of that, I also buy a bunch of these pens, like Uniball Vision pens, you know, that I call disposable, so I can have those in my vest or in my pocket or whatever. So if I lose it, I'm not going to freak out about it. But I still bring the nice pens around with me everywhere. And when when you said you get anxious about it, you mean like that's why you draw or you get anxious that you don't have them with you? I get anxious that I don't have them with me. Okay. Or that because I took them out that I'm going to lose them. I get that. That's why I started learning how to draw on my phone. It was kind of the same thing in a different direction. I'm like always forgetting my sketchbook or I don't have a pen with me. So I just finally was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to just use the apps on my phone to draw, even though it's like not the same. I'm fully aware of that. That way, whenever I need to draw something, I'm like, I can do it. But right. I know it's not for everyone. Maddie said that he never really got into drawing or anything. And I was thinking his mother being an art teacher had to have instilled that in him somehow over the years. Your mom was an art teacher. What kind of stuff did she do? I can't remember exactly what she was teaching us. I remember like um, definitely using watercolor and putting drops down on paper and blowing it with straw. I oh. definitely remember doing that. She also has multiple sclerosis. She's had it for over 20 years. But, okay, here's a good one. She had an art show, or she had, she had a little booth at a art show or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm a kid. I'm there. She priced all of her paintings extra high because she didn't actually want to sell them. Like she was doing like abstract faces with the airbrush, but she had this really impressive like David Bowie ish one, you know, and priced it at like 700 bucks and in the 80s. And that's high, I think this, this guy wanted to buy it and he was he pulled out his wallet and, and everything. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. This one's not for sale anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on it's on the wall of their house. Yeah. Right now. That's actually, that's, that's really interesting. Like, yeah, she, <laughs> she just wanted to show it, but she had to say that she was going to sell it. Although that's a great compliment to go. Somebody was going to buy it, even though he didn't and she didn't want to sell it. It's like, holy crap. Somebody wanted to pay $7 for that. Right. 700, 700. Did I say seven? Oh my yeah, God. <laughs> but they, they offered, you know, so you're right. That is, there's value there. Yeah. Wow. While we were setting up to record this conversation, Maddie had mentioned that he'd been hired to do a drawing commission for someone. That's one of the things that I've always been afraid to do myself. Do you do a lot of commissions? No, not much. I've only done a few and I have a couple in the hopper, but okay. like I said before, I'm really bad at, at this. <laughs> I kind of, uh, the whole wobbly lines thing and the whole like starting doing this last year was part of it is, was that I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to play music anymore. I mean, I can't really play like I used to anymore, but I still play. I play a lot. I play enough that my chops are back. I'm not trying to do the crazier stuff. And the wobbly lines thing was because my arms and hands are shaky sometimes. So sometimes if it's one of those days, I'm drawing a picture and <laughs> Those lines are extra, extra shaky. Right. So what what would you like to be doing with that stuff? Are there are there things you're trying to accomplish aside from doing commission work? I'm not really sure. My friend is, she did Oct Inktober with me too. And I don't know, she's just awesome. She's been posting comics. It's like about her, her kid and just, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's cool. It's funny. I would like to do that. But I really don't know what to do other than, like, talk about my anxiety or my problems, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm not sure what that looks like yet. You're not saying you aren't going to do that because I think stuff like that sometimes can really resonate with people. And I feel right. like expressing it through visuals sometimes really uh, helps that sink in a little bit more. But again, oh, wow. That's beautiful. I definitely would say go that way. Who's the artist that you were working with? Her name is Emily Clancy and her, well, definitely her Instagram. I think her 
her blog to mundane wizardry mundane wizardry yes that yes. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the Sounds tongue but i get it when you say it, you say it. Yeah. <laughs> going from figuring out a way to make a living off of music to pursuing art as a new outlet what are some of the things he was going to do to make that happen i'm supposed to have a wall at a friend's show but i haven't talked to her in a long time so now i'm not thinking that that's going to happen but i'm just going to keep doing some bigger stuff if in case I do a show somewhere, like at a coffee shop or something. How big are the pieces that you're making? You said you're making bigger pieces. Like uh, arches, paper size, like 9 by 12, I think it is. Have you done many uh, gallery shows? No. I was in a, whatever it's called when you're in school. I don't know, art show, I guess, <laughs> or art contest or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. I didn't go to school, so I don't know these complex words you're saying. The, exactly. This 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 art uh, show you speak of. <laughs> I love that. It was a it was a thing, and I got an honorable mention. Oh, cool. Okay. And I always thought I I couldn't ever quite figure out what that meant. I think that probably stuck with me for a long time. But I used to never show anyone my drawings, and that's something new for me. Just because, unless I was making a flyer or something, but I'm usually just drawing something in my sketchbook, and I don't think it's good, so I don't say, hey, look at this. And what made you finally turn the corner and start showing more people the stuff you're doing, to the point where you were going to put it up in, in a showing? What happened? I'm not really sure what happened. My friend Jess in Charleston told me I should post it online. But that's all it took for you to finally go, okay, I, I, I am going to start. Because I get the having the personal thing and not necessarily wanting to show people and you're just drawing. But when you finally start doing it, and that's difficult, and going over that first time hurdle like what made you decide to really go like okay i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna have other people view it and see what happens it was just timing i've had a lot of life changes you know i don't know you just kind of think of things differently yeah. when you go through something like that you know and like okay i'll post it online you know <laughs> <laughs> like whoop de do <laughs> yeah i'm just a dude who plays guitar you know <laughs> and do you consider yourself more of a musician than an artist I guess. I mean, that's mostly what I do. Not that it's like you have to be one or the other. It's I'm just curious how much you lean one way or the other, because I feel like I waver between the two enough where I feel like I'm, I'm both hell with it. For the last 20 years or something or more, I've just been playing music. Yeah, and that's been my focus. And like the open mic has been great because I get to help other people have their time to play or just make friends and and meet other musicians and songwriters it's been it's been really nice but like i'm after i'm playing you know what i mean like i yeah. play my own gigs i do my songs and that's what i've been motivated to do for most of my adult life and i was just touching on touring like we were doing texas and back that was going great and then the last time we were in philadelphia was one of the first times that I was having a relapse and I didn't mm. know what the hell was going on. I thought I was dying or something, you know. But now I do both. I definitely do both. I draw and paint and that's what I love about this live music drink and draw that I'm doing is that there are people who play music and we just sit there and draw. It just occurred to me, you created uh, an open mic drawing thing. What you just described there, I'm like, that's what you were saying when you first were talking about the open mic thing. Like, this is, it's free form. You have a bunch of people, you're networking, you're meeting people, you're meeting other artists, and you guys are just doing your own thing, but they show up into a spot to do it. That's really cool. I just, you, you melded the oh, two. Wow. It's just under a different name. Community is maybe the best thing that I've encountered. There are two things that Maddie tells me he's really excited about doing right now, and both of them are just things he gets a personal kick out of, and I just really admire that. Something that I'm really excited about right now is, like I told you, building the primary colors. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with that, especially blue. It's just so fun to mess with the primaries and just be like, okay, I'm gonna use these three, you know, and then just see what you can do. I just love it. It's it's my my favorite thing right now. Right next to that is playing ukulele. My parents got a ukulele at a yard sale when I was up there in October visiting for my mom's 70th birthday. She was like, look, we found this at a yard sale. 
I don't play ukulele. They're like, well, we'll mail it to you. You know, if you don't want to play, you could sell it, you know, whatever. So it just kind of sat here on my bed for a long time and I just started playing it. <laughs> hmm. It's pretty nice that you can play in bed or I can play in a moving car. <laughs> I can play with my bandmate in a car and we can sing together. It's really fun. Oh, you mean while you're riding in a car, um, not while you're driving a car. That was, I pictured you, you're like driving and you're like, oh, I don't have to hold on to the steering wheel. <laughs> no, I don't drive. <laughs> You can learn more about Maddie's artwork and music at his website, maddiesheets.com. If you're enjoying this podcast, head on over to my website, americanbandito.com slash subscribe, where you can sign up for the mailing list or find the links to all the other things that I'm on. Or if you just have a question or would like to contact me, go to americanbandito.com slash subscribe. The music for this show is by my band, Lorenzo's Music. Thanks for listening. And until the next episode, so long. So long.